Um, I do. First of all, I understand that you've got no injuries um, coming into this game, which is always good to hear. And so far, from your point of view, it's gone fit really well with the, the two wins. You haven't been afraid to make uh, decisions as well on behalf of the, the team. So are you sure you don't want this job full time? <laughs> well, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's never about not wanting this job. It's about, you know, the importance of the head of women's football role as well. So it's, it's a super, super, you know, difficult decision to make or a choice to have. Um, but, you know, when we're, when we're training and we talk about concepts of more close and supporting the way, so I'm still with the girls and taking care of us women and girls football so I think it's just that little bit step away from that position but to be still looking after the girls from another another perspective. Have fun well though. I think I really well. Yeah, yeah, it's a real you know, it's a real pleasure for me to be working with the girls. They're they're great bunch, really positive, lots of energy and lots of real willingness to, to learn and be open. So yeah, I'm having a tiny night. And do you know how close um the FAI are to finalising the, the amount of a, a new women's matter? Yeah, I think, you know, we're close with, well, the long list and now working through that to develop the short list. And do you think it'll be before Christmas? Oh, I don't know is the answer to that. I guess it's, you know, making sure we have the, the right candidates and then the right short list and then following through with the, with the process. What about the opposition Albania to pay them um, back to back as it were? Yeah. Um, and we've seen in men's football the way that Albania has improved rather dramatically. Yeah. Um, and what can you tell us about the opposition on the women's side? Yeah, we can tell you like, they'll be well organised. They appear to have a very clear playing philosophy. They like to play out from the back. They're trying to build up. And they've got some really good players, particularly their 10 and the, the wide, right, wide left winger. So, you know, they've got a lot of opportunity to exploit us if, if we don't bring our you know, 100% and allow that to happen. But yeah, we expect, we're not expecting anybody to roll over for us. And you know, the expectations is we'll take three points or six points from this camp, but we have to, I keep saying it, we have to make it happen. We talk about that with the girls. And yeah, we think, like you said, the men's games developed, the girls probably is a way to go in terms of resources afforded to them, but they're gonna come out, they're gonna go at us and we have to be ready for that. And Denise, can I ask you, you got among the goals yourselves the last day uh, in Budapest. Um, but Katie just seems to score bangers every day of time, <laughs> including in, in Hungary and again recently for Arsenal. What is it about that? Yeah, I mean, Katie only scores bangers, but she's, um, in my opinion, she's a world class player. And um, I've been playing with Katie now for several years, and just to see how much she has improved and the journey that she's been on, it's. Um, I'm very proud of her and we're lucky to have her in an Irish shirt. But from your own point of view, would you see these games against Albania as an opportunity for you to get uh, among the goals again? Hopefully, yeah, yeah, that's, that's my job in, in the number 10. Um, my job is to be creative and get in the score sheet and um, luckily I was able to do that against Hungary and for me, I always want to challenge myself, I always want to score more goals, so um, I'll be going out there looking to score more goals again. How important was Tyler Toland in, I suppose, giving you the opportunity to get further forward. Yeah, great. Um, obviously, it's good to have Tyler in now. She's a fantastic player and um, she was back in and it was like she was never never gone. She's a class player and um, for her to get in the ball and look for me in those in those spaces is great. And then, of course, we all have more to learn and Tyler has a lot more to learn as well, but it's about, um, you know, being an example for her and helping her on and off the pitch as well. I think that's very important. Questions? Uh, me, how are you doing? Good, good. Yeah. Um, you're just finishing up the season over in America. How are you feeling from it to camp? Great, yeah. Um, obviously, it was disappointing to finish the season like that and get knocked out, but um, I think I'm rare to go here with the girls. It's always exciting coming into camp, uh, being with the girls again and looking to go and win more games and just continue our performance and always get better. So, yeah, I'm excited for the, the two games ahead. I think there's some of the younger players, John Linday, and there was you know, the likes of Abby that went to the World Cup and stuff, and then Tyler drops, they didn't. They were saying that there's a real freshness around the squad at the moment, and it wasn't something that they necessarily expected, but sometimes, you know, you come in after a major tournament and there's a bit of a lull. Have you felt that? And if that is the case, what do you think it is? Yeah, 100%, I do think that. I think it's been really positive, but I think 
with new staff coming in and stuff, there's always going to be a, a positive change and um, credit to the staff, they've brought in a lot of new things for us and I think that's always a fresh start. Um, so yeah, I think I think that's the most important thing. But uh, for us, it's been it's been absolutely brilliant, and it's um, the training's great. And for us, it's about just looking to improve now each game, and hopefully we'll do that starting from tomorrow. I think we have a T.Y. shielded and off the ball. I've got it with us. Ava, she's here today. You name it. She's a big with a C. Big women's soccer fan, and it's just been nice listening to her talk about you know all these things are totally normal to her now. You know she's good. Get to see maybe you've with stuff. In terms of getting people be more and more excited in the game and looking forward to sit in the future, how do you think this third proper player is just doing that? Yeah, well, I think if we look back at the two games that we had in the last camp, we can see, you know, the girls always felt that they had a lot more to offer um, in more forward positions and, you know, maybe that they could you know, continue to develop and then add to the game around that creative side. And what we've been trying to do is, it, as a staff, is to prove them right and to allow that freedom and to, as Denise said, you know, to have that opportunity in training and on the, the, the pitch to be in higher positions and to, yeah, to go and be free and make decisions and make mistakes. But also, as you see, you can see the talent, you can see the potential that's there. You can see the, the dinner number of players who would like to go 1v1, Abby, Izzy, who want to dribble, who want to get early crosses in the box. And I think you can also see the development and then, of, you know, Kira Cruz and Denise in a higher position allows a lot more flexibility. So that's what we've been trying to do. And I'm sure, you know, when the feedback's been really positive from the previous camp um, around how the girls played and how the girls performed. And, yeah, we want we want to continue continue that and use the two games then against Albania to continue that. Well, also keeping clean sheets because that's super important. And you know the discussion around this nation league is always about all the level of the opposition, but we want to be our best selves. And actually, the challenge is often greater when you have an expectation on you to maintain your standards. So that's the message we've been driving with the players and. You know, we want to continue to excite the fans to come out and support us and, you know, set out stadium here and tell the stadium. So we've got Kate McCabe scoring bangers and we've got <laughs> Denise running around training at the mouse. So, I mean, it's, it's all very positive. <laughs> it is, it is. It's been really positive, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of do the infestation of Danny Finn during the fall. I mean, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. And you mentioned there about, you know, so like secure and getting the opportunity to score more. Yeah. And you look at Trox, the club situation, you had, you know, Denise competing at the ice level in the States. You has an all Irish score sheet, but Steve Shanoon and O'Fire told yeah. Katie scoring as well. It feels like a lot of the arts areas, whether it's club or country, are just sort of really bit patch at the moment. Yeah. Do you think that's like the experience of the Aviva and all that is feeding into how people are performing at their clubs? Or is it vice versa? Yeah, I, I think it's an integration. Of course, you know, the experiencing the video was magical and I can't imagine why a player wouldn't want to recreate that or wouldn't want to be involved in, you know, the momentum now. So you're right, we're back in the form of club because we're watching, you know, and we're also, you know, like Denise said, we've got great team of staff and we've got new supports now. We've got Evie Caspan is the performance team that coaches. She's actively linking with clubs, actively linking with players. How can we enhance, enhance theirs? How can we continue to embed the minutes that we want in here and help them? Maybe they work on that effect field as well. So it's a really good integration, and I think it's a, it is an exciting time. So lots of players, you know, really pump themselves up forward and, you know, trying to maximize the from that field as well. Uh, just on to Ron, I think it's all that game. How important is it that all the tickets are used? Like we've seen it before, we're getting so late, we don't wait at that. Event. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a, a critical point. It's absolutely brilliant, you know, it's sold out, but we need people to come out and sit in those seats because, you know, I can't describe what that support means when we're when we're on the side of a staff, when the players are on the pitch, and I'm sure Denise can describe that, but that it really does raise you up. And 
we want to play for, for the fans and we want to thank people for coming out and we want you know to show what we're capable of and excite them as as we were talking about there and i think it also really shows the progression in women's football and what that support do, does is drive the demand for you know it's in the conversation now is about around the aviva right so we need people to still come in here to prove that there is that fan base game and that they it's tangible and that they're going to action in so come out supporters we promise to give you you know a good performance and hopefully come out with this these two men with six points well then just on Darren Caldwell and it was just on the post club all the recaps so I'm sure you'll be keeping your carries close to your chest yeah just a word for Diane what well, she is given to her she was both all on or both people and what she's here in the century and club yourself as well yeah, I mean, it's it's it. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's massive for Diane, and um, I've also played with Diane for many years now, and she's um, played with her at the courage as well at club level. So I know the dedication and what Diane does every single day. She's a true professional, and um, yeah, I'm really proud of her. And to see her get her hundred cap here will be absolutely amazing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, can we echo what, what Denise is saying? I mean, she's really patriotic, she's really passionate, she has all the values that we really love as, as Irish and she gives that man so in every performance so it's a huge moment for her and it's a really proud moment for everybody around her as well. So yeah, the cards are close to the chin. It's a proud moment. Actually, plus just a quick one about those uh, all outdoor awards. We won on, on one day and co fired race. Is there any any plans as a down one to pick out or well, we haven't discussed any plans until we get past that baby, but uh, yeah, so the look, it's, it's a massive moment for Katie, you know, it's a real accolade and we're all fully supportive and again, super proud of her, so we won't let the moment go unpassed, that's for sure. But we'll keep our feet ground. Yeah, but oh, I know. Is this her peak? I like, is this, she has April power of right now? Oh yeah, 100%, I mean to it nominated for such a prestigious award is is incredible and for an Irish player to do that it's yeah we're, we're really lucky to have her and I was speaking to Katie today and I was talking about the awards and all she could speak about was I want to captain my country and that's that's really all I care about right now and playing against Albania so she was fully focused on the game which you can see that for Katie how invested she is in this team and how much she wants to go out and play for our country she loves doing it so um, yeah but we're all very proud of her here. Last one, Liz. I did mean, that. Uh, last one, we have no problem with that. And um, obviously, you have a big kit to their England as well with Emma and the backroom team and Haley Nolan and, and the squad. How is Haley a balancing note with TV's and Yeah, I mean, Haley is doing really well. Obviously, she's in with us, which is a you know, testament to how she's progressing. She's really consistent at our club now. So yeah, she's pumping herself in with the fighting chance and the whole thing around this consistency and we're working at home so she's in she's doing well in the camp um, yeah okay come to the barber section now okay because barber with the tomorrow morning i think i just spoke really how close do you follow to be in the interviews the new auto managers given your important you all in irish football and what you can do with the steam the last couple of months yeah, well, look, there's a process going on. Mark is in process. I'm heavily involved in the communication around that, and you know, I'm to have the final details for you here. But yeah, I'm in constant communication around what the process is, what's happening at each stage. So it's there. Yeah, I mean, all the news are just speeding through with information. Yeah, I, I don't have those details. So no. Okay, so it's still decided. John. Um. The, uh, just going back to Diane and um, Denise and the Mims. Go on. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> Diane, can you just give us a choice? When you came into the squad force, I think she just came back. She'd been out for a while. It's a green player. Like, what's the big difference was she on you? I leave it around when it's happening, strike it all, and she seemed very resilient. Like, what's the big example was she for you? Yeah, massive example. Look, I have huge respect for Diane and for what she's done for women's football in Ireland is absolutely huge. and. Um, Diane's a person that you want in the squad, I think. Um, as Eileen says, she's patriotic. She absolutely loves playing for her country. So she's always been a really good example to me. And um, the biggest thing is just how she 
yeah, every single day, like how she's a professional, that's just huge for me. And I've, I've looked up to Fred to Diane for a long time now. Um, but yeah, she's she's unbelievable. And for the other day, was following Tony's point, obviously you've know, excluded yourself from this race, but do you have ambition to manage a team at some point? I mean, Johnny, if I had ambition to manage a team, this team I want to manage. Yeah. So... Just have this done. The focus is on the head of women and girls football ball. So, you know, it's a super difficult decision. That, you know, that, that's what it is. But I need to ensure that these girls continue to move forward and that the future generation also continues to move forward. So I have to make that decision. But if I wanted to manage any team, it's this team. Yeah, I can say it. It looks like the, the actual manager is it's set a place. Does the boundary put in there? Well, that's, well, the, your coaches and we're back, we stay the same. For the next one, bigger points in. Yeah, I mean, look, I can't, I can't actually answer any of those those questions because. Are you on yeah, no, I can't answer that either. Uh, um, all I can say is that that process is ongoing. and Don't have any definitive answers for you. It's, it's no point even trying to make up one for you. Yeah. So do you think the group stuff will end up here? We could great that. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the group stuff still in place for a week. Yeah, look again. It's back to. And I'm going to answer very late, and, but you're right, it's a great staff with a great skill set, um, you know, some real top quality staff and all bringing a different set of attributes, which makes it a really nice mix and everybody being able to come into their role with complete autonomy and staff really into this plenary approach is, is proven very you know, positive and true players feel that as well. So, so yeah, it is. It's a, it's a really great staff, and what you're seeing on the pitch, the performance is, is a result of that. You now, we have openness and collaboration. And Deja, not in the way there. So, mm -hmm. I and mean, you've been your woman has ripped her half out of the race. So, uh, given a new manager comes in, would you like to see this staff stay together? Yeah, I think. I mean, they're fantastic. Yeah, that's out of the players' control, obviously, but I can only speak on now and what I'm seeing in camp and the staff that's in place is absolutely fantastic. They all bring something different to the team and, um, yeah, so far it's been really good. Are you, will the players be countless about your new manager? I have no idea. Um, haven't spoken about it at all with the FAI. I think our jobs right now is on Albania and to go out there and perform and that's our only focus. Do we count this tomorrow? It doesn't matter to me. Um, personally, I'm. I want to do my job, and my job's on the pitch. Whatever manager has brought in, I'll respect that. And um, for us again, yeah, it's about performing. It like it was a very good month last month. If the team plus some guarantee qualification for any day this week, if results go your way, can that help with you could come in next? Um, I'm not sure. I think um, obviously last month was the two games, fantastic, getting two wins and. Um, obviously, we want to do really well, well in the Nations League. I think it, it it's directly uh, linked to the Euros, so it's very important to be able to qualify out of this and get into to the EGA. But the yeah, answer your question about the manager, I'm not I'm not really sure if, if that will have an impact or not. Is there already caught a Switzerland in these games? Sorry? Is there already caught a Switzerland got a song in the Switzerland games? The Euros? What, the Euros? Yeah, of course. I mean... That's, that's all we're thinking about. I mean, the Nations League, as I said, it's massively important for that to be able to qualify for the Euros. So um, our focus is fully on these games and trying to get in as many wins as we can to be to be ranked the highest. More questions? Yeah, just, uh, uh, and you need to feel like there's a style, a philosophy or a style of football that's developing now, which is one just, you get, we kind of associate with your team, with your Ireland team. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Obviously, with the new staff coming in, we're trying new things. And I think as an Irish team the past few years, we're always being defensively organised and all that. But I think the new staff coming in, um, we're trying to be more creative. Uh, we're trying to be better on the transition. So I think Eileen and the staff are doing a really good job at adding that in now. And hopefully within within the next few games, we'll keep, we'll keep improving and keep getting better at it. So, uh, yeah, as I said, you've had uh, two and asked three and was asked one. Is that really like the things of the context of the team and kind of improved the race for one of the likes matches? Yeah, I mean, ultimately, like you said, two, two really good performances. 
boost confidence, his wings are always good, scoring goals are always good, clean sheet, even better. So, yes, it gives us a good, solid foundation. But, you know, and the message we're driving is that we can't be complacent, we can't, you know, have expectations that just to do, has to do the hard work at the core and then we wouldn't be creative. So we bring in new principles and allow the players to have freedom in that. But yes, two wins, you know, and goals, clean sheets, gives us a lot, a lot to be really positive about and to try to drive that forward then for the next games. And as the least state, in every team, even when we talk about Euros 2025, we talk about the importance of these games. We talk about that in the immediacy, we want the result here, but what the long term, you know, view of this campaign is Euro 2025, and we want to be there. So we, we have to make that happen. Well, thanks for just that. Paula was a fit in the mail, so dead or whatever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, thanks very much. Thanks, everyone.